Welcome back to Thread Watch. Have you been keeping up? Creepy unsolved mysteries, from unsolved murders to unidentified people to unexplained supernatural events, what are some of the creepiest unsolved mysteries you've ever heard of? Lost Boy Larry, this one creeps me out the most. Back in 1973, New Mexico, there were several disturbing and frantic CB radio calls allegedly coming from a seven-year-old boy named Larry. Larry claimed that he and his father had been in a car accident after his father had collapsed at the wheel and that he and his father were both currently stuck upside down inside their overturned red pickup truck. Those who actually spoke to Larry were adamant that he was a real child and in desperate need of help, while others claimed that Larry's inability to answer basic questions like what his last name was, or what town he was from proved the whole situation to be a hoax. Others have pointed out that if the truck was truly upside down the CB radio would not be working as the antenna would have been broken, or the very least, have been compromised to the point where it wouldn't have worked. Another common criticism is that that the calls wouldn't have been able to reach as far as they did to California and Wyoming if the car was upside down because of the above mentioned reason, and finally, that the batteries would have died long before the final calls stopped emerging. Lastly, despite the confirmed sighting of a red pickup truck in the area, a search turned up nothing. The calls last five days before finally ceasing, and Larry was never found. Nearly, 47 years later, it's still unknown whether, or not this was a true child in grave danger, or just a sickeningly cruel hoax. The vanishing of Asha Degree, Asha Degree was a nine-year-old girl who seemingly willingly left her house in the middle of the night during a violent downpour on February 14, 2000. Asha was a shy, and well-behaved girl who came from a loving home with kind, and hard-working parents and had no known reason to ever run away. Still, the young girl backed up her things, and fled the house one stormy night. While she was seen by multiple cars as she walked by her lonesome self down the highway, only one motorist went back to see what a young girl was doing out alone so late at night and in such horrible weather. The last sighting of Asha was by the motorist who reportedly saw her fleeing into the woods, and while candy wrappers and other items of hers like her backpack and its contents have been found, Asha herself has never been seen again. Who is Delta Dawn and who killed her? Delta Dawn is the name given to an unidentified 18-month-old toddler whose body was found near a delta near the Escatorpa River on December 5, 1982. According to several eyewitnesses, Dawn, or at least another toddler greatly resembling Dawn, was seen in the custody of a distressed-looking young woman who was carrying her along Mississippi State Highway 63 two days prior. Despite her distressed state, the woman ardently turned down any and all attempts and offers for help by passing motorists. Two days later, a truck driver reported seeing an adult female's body floating face down in a river near a bridge in the area. Investigators searched the scene and found no such thing, but upon investing by the bridge itself, found little Delta Dawn's body lying lifeless and partially submerged in the water. Another search of the area did not turn up the body of an adult woman, but rather the skeletal remains of an 18 to 22 year old black male, and to this day, neither he, Delta Dawn, the woman she was with, nor the adult woman the truck driver claimed to see floating in the river have ever been identified. Alien encounters or hauntings that have somewhat more evidence to them than just the testimony of who they happened to. It's a big stretch to believe these things, I know I always don't but they can be very interesting. It's not always the person making it up or just after money. Exhibit A. The Battle of Los Angles. It's almost too perfect. I don't personally believe in alien visitation but the picture is just striking. I used to be super creeped out by these kinds of unsolved mysteries, until I came across a few videos describing unsolved mysteries that later ended up being resolved, and it turns out that a lot of the time, it's a completely mundane explanation. The one that stuck out in my head was this guy who just disappeared off the face of the earth one night with seemingly no motive for running away, no sign of his car either. A decade after his disappearance, some guy browsing Google Maps saw a strange shadow in a pond and called the property's owner, and after investigation they dredged up the guy's car from the pond with his skeleton inside. Turns out that he'd accidentally driven into the pond on his way home, and that was that. Another thing worth noting is that even with the internet, actually identifying bodies isn't exactly easy. The Grateful Doe case exemplified this for me, some guy was in a car accident and was unidentified for 20 years, until 2015 where photos of a similar looking guy were found on Facebook and it turned out to be a DNA match. 
I guess the scariest or saddest part is realizing that there's probably a lot of people out there who could just disappear and nobody would really be there to worry about where they've gone to. Years ago I listened to this podcast from Binnell of America where he interviewed a Kendall Carver who runs the site International Cruise Victims. It paints a horrifying look into how many people go missing on cruise ships and the amount of crime on them, it's staggering and I will never set foot on a cruise ship grimace it's also super interesting and a very deep rabbit hole to go into. The Hinterkaifeck murders always stuck with me. Like at the surface it's not unusual for an unsolved murder, but it just gets more unsettling the more you think about it. My vote is for the father of the widowed daughter's son. The YOGTZE case an out-of-work food engineer in West Germany named Gunther Stoll is freaked out about some unknown group stalking him and is constantly going on about it to his wife. On October 25, 1984, he yells, Now I've got it, writes Yog C on a piece of paper and scratches it out. He drives off and visits a pub in another town. He falls and injures himself, but witnesses say he only had one beer and was clearly not intoxicated. He just suddenly lost consciousness. Later he gets up and drives away. It's now 1am and he visits an old friend in his hometown. He mentions some horrible accident in the gap of time between him leaving the bar and meeting his friend. He then leaves to visit his parents on his friend's advice. His car was found by two truckers at 3am crashed in a ditch on the A45 autobahn. Gunther is found in the car, but both truckers say there was a man in a white jacket walking around the car before disappearing. Gunther was completely naked. He claimed there were four men with him and that they weren't friends. He died on the way to the hospital. Investigators determined Gunther was injured beforehand, likely by being run over. He was likely placed in his car and driven to the crash site. The disappearance of Nicholas Barclay. He was never found and some creepy French man impersonated him and lived with his family for months. He was able to convince the family he was Nicholas and the family was oddly accepting of this man who looked nothing like Nicholas, leading some to believe the family knew Nicholas was dead and they used odd situation to cover up his possible murder op, you had a lot of them I'd never heard of. I think the Asher degree one is the weirdest to me because there doesn't seem to be any reason she would run away, especially not in the middle of a rainstorm. However it's clear that she left because she wanted to rather than being abducted out of the house. Maybe this nine-year-old was living a double life and the parents weren't as involved and aware as they thought they were, who knows. I heard about a weird one recently, you can read about it in more detail here. Three young women were at the Indiana Dunes beach one day back in 1966. The couple sitting next to them on the beach saw them go out into the water and get on a boat, leaving their beach towels and purses behind. They never came back bunch of insane ties to a crazy horse murdering insurance scheme and a candy heiress too. Worth a read. I saw the documentary about that back in 2014 or so and I believe that they murdered him too, something with the mother and, I think it was, the older brother. I don't think the older sister was involved or that she really even knew for sure and that's why she wanted to believe it was him so badly. I think the mum was just a scummy idiot who was relieved to have the cover, and I remember the imposter said that he could tell the older brother knew he was an imposter and even told him, good luck, at one point. Not one single mystery, at least on the surface, but the disappearances covered in the missing 411 series of books and films really fascinates me. Every case involved has circumstances that make them stand out from other disappearances. The person is there one moment, then gone the next. They all have happened in either national parks or forests. The area they disappear in usually is close to granite, often in or near granite boulder fields. Search and rescue dogs are unable to track them. Clothing is often found removed, or if the person, body is found their clothing is on wrong or inside out. If a body is found it's often far away from the point of disappearance and in an area not easily accessible. If a body is found the cause of death cannot be determined. Sudden weather usually follows the disappearance, often counter to projected forecasts. If the person is found alive they can't remember what happened to them or what they did while they were missing. And if their body is found it's often in an area that has been previously and thoroughly searched before, as if placed there to be found. One of my other favorite mysteries is the Skinwalker Ranch. A family buys the ranch and reports several bizarre phenomena happening, from ghosts, to UFOs, to Sasquatch-like beings, to giant wolves that appear tame and allow the family to pet them, then turn around and attack a calf in a pen and doesn't react to being shot with magnum handguns and rifles. 
Aerospace billionaire Robert Bigelow buys the ranch and sets up a group of scientists to observe and document the phenomena. The US government takes an interest and contacts Bigelow to allow government scientists to come observe and document the phenomena. The scientists documented all kinds of phenomena, corroborating what the family reported, and other things like orbs of colored light, creatures exiting out of portals, voices and strange music coming out of thin air, and more. I've actually been up to the property line, and the place definitely has a vibe that you can feel. Like the air is charged with an oppressive energy. The Delphi murders. Two girls go to a park, cross this old raised bridge, one that used to have trains run across it. They take loads of pics, everything up to the moment of the event is actually documented. Adult that is picking them up notices they are late and nowhere to be seen. A search party is called, and they find the bodies. Law enforcement is pretty hush-hush about it, kinda vague as to if the girls have been assaulted and even how they died. But the kicker is the last video uploaded by the girls. They are nervously pointing the camera at a man approaching them on this raised bridge platform. It is a narrow walkway, so their paths are without a doubt going to intersect. But it gets even crazier, the gigs apparently had the awareness to capture another video of this stranger interacting with them. Like most details in the case, police haven't ever released footage of this, just a very very short bit of audio of the man saying, down the hill, likely in reference to commanding them to go down a hill at one end of the bridge, not far from where the bodies were found. Unfortunately despite a grainy, yet decent still of the man, as well as this voice recording, they have no idea who is responsible. The park is apparently very close to a highway, which juts across the state, so the perpetrator likely got out of there in a matter of minutes, long before the red flags were raised. Another thing to note is that the parking lot entrance to the park was empty, though there are a few nearby lots, but you would have to know the area and where to cut through the woods in order to utilize these. Some good info can be found on r Delphi Murders. Taking this directly from the Reddit group, which is relatively well run. Apologies for formatting, I am on mobile. The part that bugs me about this one is that we have so much evidence, yet it feels like they aren't ever going to solve it. It is chilling that the girls were aware enough of the danger to capture their last moments on video. The disappearance of Relisha Rudd is one that I check up on from time to time. Relish's case got a lot of attention, even some national attention at the time that it happened, but seems to have been mostly forgotten. She and her mother lived at a shelter in DC. One day, Relisha quit showing up at school and her mother told the school Relisha was having health problems and was in the care of a Dr. Tatum. The school couldn't contact this doctor, so the school, not her mum, then filed a missing persons report. It was found out later that Dr. Tatum was Khalil Tatum, who wasn't a doctor, but some janitor who worked at the shelter. There's CCTV footage of this guy taking Relisha to some motels and not too long after, he was seen purchasing a shovel, lime and 42-gallon trash bags. Then Tatum's wife was found murdered, presumably by him, and later he was found dead of an apparent suicide. Odds are Relisha is dead, but because so is the guy who abducted her, we'll never know for sure or the details of what happened. I remember there being some talk of the mother being involved or a sex trafficking angle. Just a really creepy, sad story. Timothy Pitson's case is strange. His mum took him out of class. They went on a small road trip to a water park. The mum is seen checking in with the kid, but he just disappears. Then the mum kills herself. She wrote in her suicide note that Tim is with people who would love and care for him, and you'll never find him. IIRC, some teen showed up a few years ago saying he was Tim, but his DNA wasn't a match. I remember this being popular on YT a few years ago. Then the adpocalypse happened and no one wants to put ads on Morbid Susan. A few creators either stopped making content or just went the way of normie tier Susan. There's still people who make content but they're largely unadvertised and unrecommended. Ever seen forensic files? Almost every single episode ends on some sort of unresolved issue about most of the cases at hand, and it always left a chill with me. One guy's murderer was caught for example, but all they ever found was his hands. And, no one ever found anything else ever again. It's why I loved watching it. Really makes you wonder. As for something not so grisly, there's the Voynich Manuscript. It's a book so mysterious, it's named for a man who bought it in 1912, despite being carbon dated back to the 1400s. 
The text inside is written in a completely unknown, undeciphered language, and there are plenty of illustrations that give you an idea as to what it could be, but nobody truly knows what it is. The Wikipedia article is pretty comprehensive on the details about how it's been mulled over throughout the ages by cryptographers and historians worldwide. The Yuba County Five, five men, four of them mentally disabled, and one of them mentally disturbed, went missing on the night of February 24, 1978 after attending a college basketball game. Several days later, their car was found abandoned in a remote part of the Plumas National Forest, far out of the way from the location the men had been beforehand. Investigators to this day can't find an explanation for why the car was abandoned as it could have easily been pushed from the snowdrifts and was in good working order, or how it ended up in such a remote area in the first place. Months later, in June 1978, four of the five men's bodies were found in a trailer over 20 miles away from their car. While three of the bodies were skeletal, one of them, Ted Weiher, was not and it appeared that he survived for as long as three months after the men were last seen. The most bizarre thing is that all the supplies in the trailer such as food, water, and heating materials were completely untouched, meaning that Weiher had intentionally starved himself to death for seemingly no reason. His shoes were missing, while the shoes of another one of the men, Gary Mathias, were found not too far out in the nearby woods. Gary Mathias, the mentally disturbed man who suffered from diagnosed schizophrenia, was the only body not accounted for, and over 40 years later, no one has been able to find him, nor figure out what happened to the men that fateful snowy night. Thanks for watching, see you on the boards.